I've got an LDP system here, and I've got several tables. So maybe I have my product table here, and then I have a, another table here that's maybe my uh, product categories. Categories, and maybe a uh, let's see, maybe it's product subcategories. And I've got another table here, and this is going to be my product uh, photos. And another table here, let's say that's going to be my product reviews. And maybe I got another one here, uh, you know, my product uh, whatever, comments, maybe something like that, things like that. So lots of information here. Here's, here's my product table, and it may be joined to the category table, which is joined to the subcategory table. And that's joined over to the product photos, and maybe the reviews are joined directly to that. Maybe the comments are joined to the reviews here. So lots of different uh, ways that this could be designed here. But this is just one example of what you could have inside of a your regular OLTP system. And of course, now my product here, uh, that's going to be tied over to some other information over here. So maybe I've got my sales information over here. So my sales details, and then for my sales details. I've got maybe my, I've got a sales header, something like that. And this may actually be flipped around here depending on how your design is. But this is the type of environment. And now for my sales, I've got a whole other system out here. I'm going out somewhere else, and that's going to go to uh, out somewhere and maybe connect to my other tables. And I'll have information like, say, my customers and maybe my employees and uh, my stores. And so on and so forth. So lots of other information tied to this. So and each one of those, the customers, employees, and stores, they're going to have several tables each. So this is a typical OLTP system here. I've got sales information, and then I have tables that support that information. Uh, broken down as, as uh, denormalized as possible, way out there so that uh, you're not repeating information here. Great design for an OLTP system. Bad design when it comes to reporting. Uh, uh, one of the reasons we're going to create a data warehouse is to make our make it our life much easier when it comes to reporting. So if right now, if I wanted to say, uh, show me all my sales in this area at this time uh, for this type of product, this type of category, uh, it would I would have to join several tables. I'd have to join maybe sales details and headers. I'd have to go uh, grab the dates out of that and do a where calls on my dates. It could be complicated. I may have to pull in the product, the product category, product subcategory tables, uh, and so. Several tables joined. You just end up with 10, 15 tables joined together. And uh, let's say they want to analyze something like, uh, let's see how our sales are uh, on Thanksgiving. You know, we're, we're a, you know, we're a medical company. We're open on Thanksgiving, so uh, we have you know, we have a, you know, not customers, but uh, patients come in on those days, and we want to see how uh, how we're doing uh, on Thanksgiving or each year. Well, of course, Thanksgiving is going to change each year. You know, this year versus la last year, it's on a different date. So I just can't put in a where calls and say where. It's you know November 24th or 25th or whatever. So I've got to say uh, if 24th of 2010 and 25th of 2009 and so on and so forth. But I'm, I'm not quoting the exact dates there, but uh, you get the point. So uh, if next year comes along, I've got to add on Thanksgiving for this year. Well, now I've got uh, another date I've got to add in there. So I've got to keep adding on to my where calls over and over again. Something we want to try to avoid doing. We want to be able to just drag and drop in and slice by Thanksgiving. Well, a data warehouse gives us the ability to do that with a date dimension table. And uh, the products here, we don't really need all this information in our data warehouse. We're not going to slice by product photo. We're not going to slice by product reviews. Maybe we want to see that information in details. Maybe we need to, to drill down to see those details at some point. But we're not going to really need to slice by that. My end user is never going to say, OK, show me where the review equals this. It's not going to really be in my where clause. So that's details we may pull in, but it's not something that we're going to actually uh, dimensionalize here. So this type of design here, how would we get this from an OLTP system like this over into a data warehouse? Well, these items over here on the left-hand side, we may actually take these items and uh, separate them out into a dimension. And we need to decide what's going to be on our dimension. Well, you know, really product photos, that's not something I really, I really don't need product photos. I don't, in fact, product reviews, we're never going to look at that in reporting. Uh, product comments, that's never going to be something on our, our report we're going to analyze to look at our sales. Uh, products, the categories and subcategories. That's you know those items right there. Yes, that's definitely going to be something I want to keep. So those are my items there. So everything that's in your OLTP system doesn't need to come over to the data warehouse. Uh, most in most cases, in most cases you're going to have items that are not going to go to your uh, 
into your, your data warehouse. You're going to have tables to the left off, like for example, product photos. Unless you really want to have those product photos in your reports for some reason, uh, that's something you don't have to pull over. And uh, on top of that, if you do want to show the, the photos on the report, it's not something you have to actually dimensionalize. You can actually create what's called uh, actions and drill throughs inside of your reports. They can pull that data directly out of a, a table and not having to uh, dimensionalize that and put it into, say, a cube. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on, too. All right, our sales here. So here's our sales. This is, so this is definitely going to be our facts over here, right? Well, maybe our sales detail and our sales header, we're going to combine those together in some type of way. And we want to get just the details out of that. So over here, this is going to be our fact sales. And then over here on the left right here, this will be our dim product. So dim product, that's our dimension. Uh, DIM, DIM stands for dimension, of course. And then our, our facts over there, and actually that's going to be fact sales, like that, fact sales. And uh, we may have multiple fact tables. We may want to break this up even further. Let's say inside of our sales details there, we've got sales from our internet website, and we've got sales from our reseller stores out in, uh, out in the country. So maybe it makes sense to break those up. Maybe we need to put those into separate uh, items. The question is, do those things ever get analyzed together? Does anybody ever say, I need to compare my internet sales to my reseller sales for this date and time? If that's true, then we, mean, we might need to have those in the same data warehouse. Uh, it may make sense to actually break up into separate facts tables. So instead of just one big fact sales here, I may actually have something like this, where I have a fact reseller sales, and then I have a fact internet sales. I run out of room here. So I may have actually two separate tables here, fact reseller sales and fact internet sales for my, and I misspelled internet, but that's fine. Uh, we, we may actually have two sets of tables here uh, for our items. So, so in some cases, you may actually break a table up. Instead of combining things together like we did with the products, we may actually break items up into separate tables. Uh, it depends on, again, the business questions that are being asked and how we need to answer those questions. Uh, and the, the answer, the question is always, do we need to combine those things together? Do we need to analyze those things together? Uh, what questions are in, our business users have that uh, need to be answered? And how can we design this to answer those questions? That is the, the main point of dimensional modeling. 